Pine had a mouth and maybe eyes, and that was it. And they figured out a way to get all these different mechanisms in this tiny space, and they're pretty incredible. All right, so first thing, you notice the eyes are free floating. There is a weighted system in the head. They go back and forth and up and down. And the distinctive feature on the McElroys is the painted ping pong ball eyes. So we there's we estimate that George and Glenn made about 50 figures and we have nine McElroys in our collection. So here's Cecil. The rest are on those bleachers over there. I think they're colored in yellow on their cards. And then over here on my right is Clyde. So Clyde was one of the early figures. You can see he does not have ping pong ball eyes. He's got that troll look. So eventually they moved to this more friendly look in Cecil, which I like. Um, and the figures got more complex. So let me show you what he can do. He obviously has a mouth, as they all do, of course. He's got an upper lip to smile or snarl. His eyes, you'll notice his eyebrows also are on weights and they just sort of bob around to get away. And then he's got the fun stuff. All right, here we go. So he can sniff. <laughs> right, what's his, what's his name? Cecil Wigglenose. Uh. Sniff his nose. If something stinks, <laughs> stick out his tongue. Yeah, gross. <laughs> He's got shell winker, blink at pretty girls. Clap his ears, cross his eyes. All right, now somebody needs to scare him. Boom, <laughs> Great wig. So, so much fun, right? All these things. All right, now here is also the genius of the McElroys. Take the head off, because that's really fun. All right. So they developed this system of controls that look like typewriter keys, although they're not actually. You've got the the mouth and the upper lip are here, the main controls. And then this box here has all the fun stuff. So we've got the nose, and the tongue, and the winker, and the cross eye, the fright wig. And I missed the, where are the ears? Hold on. Top left, top left. Top left. That there you go, right there. Thank you. Yeah. So, some of their figures have, um, Smoker, spitter, one that can be redirected to come out the ears. The smoke is captured, and then if it gets really mad, it comes out the ears. A light bulb in the nose. Um, of all the figures the McElroy's made, they only made one girl, Sally Ann. She's large, and she had light bulbs in her cheeks so she could blush. Oh, so. Copperfield owns her now. And powder that they used for the smoking effect? How did they achieve? That it's a system of piping and then a, a rubber ball. So they actually had a cigarette and they would squeeze mm. and it would draw the smoke into into the bulb. Into the bulb. And then there was a lever that you flip and when you squeeze it again it went back out the other way. Wow. That is wow. genius. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty great. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. They also have in they have this cradle mechanism in the body that I wish I could show you guys. It's they're heavy. And so I'm gonna take the head off. Here we go, you ready? Yeah. So if you look, do you see on the bottom of the head, you see how it has that hole? It slides down onto a rod in the body and it's supported. So when I set the head down and I turn it, it's locked. And then you're not spending your weight of your arm trying to support the heavy head. Um, but it also has free range of motion. So the cradle moves around. It's genius, isn't it? So World War II started, all the metal got rationed for the war effort. And George and Glenn gave up figure making, and then they worked to, went to work for Procter & Gamble here in Cincinnati. Had a successful career at P&G. They only made one figure after they went to P&G. So, they're pretty cool.